Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we're talking about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Roswell, New Mexico. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode. It was a great episode because there's a lot of, like, misdirection and stuff in this episode. It's, like, they really, like, kicked up the mystery element to it. Because, obviously, everyone's working together to figure out, like, who this fourth alien is. And there's a lot, a lot of interesting details that came out of this episode I didn't really realize. And the fact is that, I'll go ahead and break it down, like, Isabel makes this point where she was like, oh yeah, the alien made me do something, obviously what it did to Rosa, how it killed Rosa with the red glowing hand, I was like, oh, I was like, okay, so, she was saying like, oh, it made me do something I didn't realize I was capable of, I was like, what? I was like, oh, I thought that was the alien using its powers through her, but now in retrospect, when you really think about it, it's like, right. Isabel and Alien have very similar abilities. Granted, it's stronger. I mean, given enough time and practice, maybe Isabel could get to that same level. But obviously, she just kind of nudges and influences people. She can't outright control them. So, but that means like that power that killed Rosa is something that's there buried deep within. Just like Max's power to heal people could also have the reverse of killing them but then i started because at first i was thinking well max can kind of do a similar thing so i was like can they all technically do it i mean that probably even means that michael has a dual side to his ability or at least there's more that he can do that maybe he isn't aware of because right now he knows his you know his telekinesis but still that was just such an interesting little detail like that i also love that there's that common little joke throughout the episode where like you know because noah's like whoa jump you know oh watch out killer and she isabel kind of looks at me he's like yeah okay that probably not the best words to use and even later or max didn't show up and isabel's like i'm gonna have to kill him and then cam and liz look at her and she's like okay yeah i, I realize that that's probably too soon for me to be saying that i love that that's just kind of a little bit of a bit in the episode but it was so fascinating because obviously one of the early suspects is Maria. And I'm like, yo, that's crazy because it didn't even cross my mind to even consider Maria. But then you think about like the smoke bomb situation that happens to Michael later on. Like Maria is the one that ended up bumping into him. And then like you look at all the murders, the people that got murdered were kind of around Maria and, you know, her bar and everything. And then it's like, oh, she sent us down a path to uh, something that didn't pan out. So it's like... Dude, that's crazy, especially for Liz, because Liz is like, that's her best friend. And I think, like, her best friend's the one who potentially murdered her sister and all that. Um, that in itself would be kind of hard to, you know, deal with. But then it turns out, no, it's not Maria. It turns out she was being controlled because someone at the party had drugged her. Um, so that make, it makes you wonder, though, about that situation. I guess that it got put in there at a later point in time. Which, well, because it's interesting because, like, well, she got drugged at the party. Maybe she had already been controlled before. Because obviously, like, you know, obviously everything that Maria's going through with her mom and everything. So that's why I'm thinking, like, maybe she was in a bad state before. Like, obviously. So I was wondering, maybe earlier she had already been drugged. Or maybe it was a situation of, obviously, she's dealing with everything with her mom. Like, maybe she was drinking earlier or something. And that's how the alien took advantage of her or something. Because, obviously, it, it takes advantage of states where you're kind of blacking out. So, And I guess, you know, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Obviously, we're going to talk about the big reveal. There's other stuff I want to talk about, but I'll, I'll discuss that a little bit later on. But then there's basically finding out that it was Noah. Took me by surprise. Like, there was a part of me that was like, okay, maybe it is Noah. But then I was like, nah, the way he reacted when it came to, like, oh, he confronted Isabel. Because, like, someone had thrown it out there. It's like, the fact is that he took that too well. And it's like, in retrospect, it's like, yeah, he did. He took it extremely well with the whole discovery of, like, oh, yeah, my wife is an alien. Which, to be fair, you can also make the argument he didn't take it that well because he did buy a gun and everything. But my thought process was, like, there's no way it could be him because the fact is he told her that he found out about it. It's like, if you were the alien, why would you say anything? But I guess that's the whole point, to get her to trust you, being like, oh, you know this secret about her, so she kind of lets her guard down. She's not as on edge and everything. Like, kind of lead her into a false sense of security because that way it reassures her, like, oh, yeah, like, Noah's by my side no matter what. So there's no point part in her mind that would even question that he might potentially be the fourth alien you know when it's later on discovered that there's a fourth alien behind all this so i thought that was so interesting i mean it kind of showed like that means he literally and they bring that up too it's like he controlled that guy to shoot him and to be fair it's like yeah like he was the only one that just happened to get shot in a non-vital place so part of you might be like okay maybe he's just lucky but it just shows you how much of a 
how crazy Noah is with this whole situation that he well orchestrated all this, especially because he's been playing like, oh, the good husband and everything, like, oh, the supportive husband, and it's like he played that role. You can borderline say he's psychopathic since the fact is that he was able to do that so easily, you know, because it turns out like obviously because now in retrospect, it's like, okay, so he loves uh, Rosa, he always has. I wonder what is it about Rosa that made him fall in love? I guess just the fact is that she was kind of a loner and he kind of felt like one too. Because it turns out like like his um, group, like the the law firm or whatever that he works for, ends up helping. Out, and it was there a lot of times and would try and give advice to people. And it's like, okay, so that's how he found his victims because they'd come to him, you know, you know, because obviously a lot of them were probably people, you know, they're people that wouldn't be missed so he's probably going up to him like hey do you need advice and stuff like that i'm here giving you legal help and stuff like that so now it kind of puts everything a little more in perspective of why he's doing this and the sad thing is isabel isn't strong enough to like she's able to she tries to get inside of his mind and tries to be like no 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 there's no way it's um no there's just no way and then she tries to be like okay do you love me and he kind of answers other questions she's like no wait you're not answering the question i asked do you love me? Because it's like, yeah, we're connected and I will always protect you. Which is, I wonder why does, I guess because they are aliens. So it's like, of course, everything I'm ever going to do is going to be for the purposes of protecting you. Like, you know, in a sense of, I guess because for him, it's like, oh, we're, we, because we have such a bond, we found each other. Which is so interesting because that means the entire time he knew about her being an alien. Considering the fact is that he used her to kill Rosa as well as those other two girls, so that it's so fascinating. Luckily for you know, well, Max, because Cameron showed up in time to start shooting and being like, "Yo, Max might not want to shoot you, but I'm not afraid to do it." Then Liz coming in with the drug, and it was like, "Dude, it was going to get." It was close because he started using his powers, but what I loved is, like, obviously the drug kicks in, the serum kicks in in time, and Liz lands in a good punch, and then Max comes in to kind of knock him down and out. And that's, that's got to be heartbreaking, especially for Isabel. Because, I mean, for one, it's like you're finding all this stuff out. Like, oh, potentially you murdered people. And you find out, wait, there's a fourth alien. It turns out that fourth alien is actually the your husband who... Have they ever explained how long they've actually been together? I don't know. Like, you've obviously known him for a long time. And for things to kind of be like that is so... It's sad. Just finding out that one of the people you probably trust most in this world. You thought you felt safety and comfort because this person is like oh he now knows the truth about you and still loves you and everything he's still by my side so you thought you, you you could see her thinking for a second like oh i've got it made i've got my family i've got noah you know and then this happens i'm very interested to find out what this whole situation is like why noah has gone on like a killing spree and stuff like that why kill all these people i guess for him it's like to feel powerful maybe he has some sick twisted thing where it's like oh he's killing people you know who rejected him, like, like he killed Rosa because, oh, she rejected, like, he's some, he's in some twisted need for love, maybe his human parents didn't treat him right, maybe he got abused, and that triggered something in him, maybe that was the first time he discovered his abilities, if you're familiar with Jessica Jones, maybe he's on some Kilgrave type of shit, which is interesting, considering the fact that he kind of has similar abilities to Kilgrave, because it's interesting, because, like, even comparing his abilities to Isabel, like, Isabel kind of, like, time stops, because obviously she's just inside your brain, but Noah can do this and do that, like, he can, because uh, I was curious, like, how his powers would like necessarily work like would he have to kind of be unconscious while he's like controlling because i thought that's what it is i thought he kind of steeped in your body it's kind of like he transfers his consciousness into you while still kind of maintaining himself maybe because at the end there when he because it seems like he could still be himself while he's controlling because i also was thinking like can he control multiple people at a time because anytime we've ever seen him it's only one person at a time so obviously his power is not that crazy powerful but enough that he can you know completely control somebody to be fair in a lot of those cases he ha can't just outright control them they have to be in a situation where they're in a blacked out state but to be fair in um Isabel's case I think hers is different because she opened up her mind to him so it kind of left her mind vulnerable by using her powers it's interesting because even he literally said that like if you use your powers you're going to be open and vulnerable and it's like oh he even had her promise like yeah don't use your powers because he doesn't want to be forced to be in a situation where I'm like okay I'm gonna have to take control of you now which is like I said I think this is also a twisted desperate need for love and anytime anyone rejected him he ended up killing them I think that's what this is all stemming from it all stems from Rosa at first at least that we're aware of, but like I said, it could easily be connected to like his parents and stuff like that. 
But some other interesting things that kind of went down in this episode, for one, is like the whole uh, Liz and Mac situation. Because Maria brought up something interesting where it's like, oh, yeah, like you're wearing this particular lipstick because it's like you're kind of trying to push Mac away. And she's like, no, I'm not. And then she's like, am I subconsciously doing that? Because like obviously like the lab she's working at, like the studies being taken elsewhere because it's not safe to come. Because they think the attack on the lab was connected to what they're working on. Obviously, that's not the case, as we know. But the fact is that now Liz has to choose between staying because her dad's like, no, you have this opportunity. It's been nice having you here these past months, but kind of live your life like the world is kind of your oyster type of situation of like you should go out there and venture out and do what's important to you. But it's like, obviously, that's not the only thing keeping her here. Max is too. But there's some part of her she even admits like she was kind of glad and relieved when she thought that Max had um, stood her up because it's like, okay, Max messed things up. I wasn't the one that messed things up. Because for her, it all stems from the fact is that she's worried that, you know, she's going to mess things up because for her, she's like, there's something inside of her that just wants to break away and just run. And she's like, and you know, Max is like, it doesn't take a scientist to figure it out. It's like what it is. It's like, you know, obviously everything with her mom, her mom having, you know, bailed in her life is like that and stuff. So that kind of, you know, thing when you're so young, obviously it has its effects on you for the rest of your life too. So, but the fact is for her, it's like, you don't make me feel safe and comfortable, Max. You make me feel like I'm teetering off a cliff, which you don't, I guess for her, it's kind of like the rush of being together. And it's just for her, it's like she got addicted to that feeling because everything that's connected to not just how she feels about Max, but also just everything about his life and her kind of being a part of all of that now. But for her, it's like, if she ever does run away, it's like, I need you to, like, follow me this time. And he was like, I would have done it last time, but I just didn't know if that's what you wanted. Because what made Liz kind of, like, say all this is because it took Isabel pointing things out to be like, because it's like, because, oh, you know, for her, it's like she blames Isabel because it's like, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have left town. Which is so interesting, considering the fact that she told Max last time because it's like, I guess because she didn't want to, you know, strain the relationship between Max and his sister even more. And maybe for her, she was thinking like, no, I already felt like this, so I was going to go anyway. Isabel just kind of pushed what was already there. But I think for her, she was thinking, I think she was just saying that trying to make things better between Max and his sister. But then it's like... You have Isabel being like, yes, like I influence people. I don't make people do what they do, anything they don't want to do. Like I just push you into doing something that you already want to do. Saying basically she brought the feeling that, you know, it's like I, for one, I didn't tell you to leave Roswell. I only want you to leave Max. Leaving like Roswell was all on you. And it kind of got Liz thinking like, oh, wow, like that's interesting because for her, it's like. I just want you to leave Max. The fact is you left with Roswell because there was already something there. It's like, we don't have to tell Max the truth, but she's like, at the very least, you need to know that that's something that's always there. Because for her, it's like, I don't want you going, hurting my brother again. Because like for, um, because what started all of it, it's like Max stood me up. It's like, no, you would do that. Max would never do that is what Isabel was kind of saying. So that kind of what triggered the whole thing. And I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing. I mean, especially after everything that's happened to her, everything with her mom, plus Rose, because I think, because part of me was thinking Rosa was part of that thing. Because obviously that's one of her reasons for leaving town. But there's also that part of her, I think, just stemming from everything from mom that also made her want to leave as well, you know. So, but it didn't just stop there. This episode also did a very good thing of kind of like building a relationship more between Michael and Max. Because for them, there's a lot that hasn't been said. Because obviously, like, ever since everything went down 10 years ago with them covering up all those murders. Like, the fact is that... um Max and Michael haven't been tight as they used to be, but you know, cause the conversation comes up cause it's like, yo, we talk and it's like, Max is like, no, we speak. We don't really talk like we used to because like for Max it's like, I don't really know that much about you because he was like, whoa, you and Maria. He's like, I thought you were gay. He's like, I'm bi. The fact of the matter is you're kind of like, you know, kind of saying like, you know, why get so caught up in details and stuff like that? Like the whole binary situation. And he's like, oh, like I, I would, you know, I would have known if you had talked to me. And it's like, yeah, they haven't really had any really deep conversations. Hell, it turns out apparently Michael didn't even tell Max the real reason how his hand got broke all those years ago. I guess probably Isabel probably doesn't know either. I wonder, did she ever get inside of Michael's mind? I mean, that's also another interesting thing, too, when you actually break that down. I was like, no, I guess because Isabel would never felt the need to use her powers on her brothers. So... Why would, you know, so how would she know a lot of stuff anyway? But still, it's like, I doubt he told Isabel either because he didn't want them to know the truth. Uh, 
he, he ends up coming up with an excuse at first where he's like, yeah, if Alex saw my hand perfectly healed, considering he saw what his dad did to it, then, you know, he would have had questions. But for Michael, it runs even deeper because it's supposed to be a reminder. Don't trust, like, you have, he has hope in humanity and stuff like that. Alex made him feel like, hey, I have somewhere I belong. That hand, his hand is to remind him that's not the case. Like, hope can be a dangerous thing. It can lead you down a bad path and you can make the argument Maybe you can make the argument the same thing kind of happened to Max in certain regards. Make the argument maybe it happened to Isabel in certain regards. Hope, you know, to have this life, you know, keep some normalcy and stuff like that, that you can kind of get what you want being what they are, aliens and all that, you know. So it's it's just kind of an interesting thing when you actually think of it you know, and, and over the scale of everyone. But, you know, for Max, it's like it's not just the past 10 years. There's always been issues for him between us for the past 20, ever since my mom or my parents pick me and Isabel and not you. And he's like, you've, and he's like, to be fair, I've always pushed my parents away for that choice because the fact is, you are my brother, you are my family. And for him, it's like, no matter what pain, heartbreak, or broken bones you fe you've gone through, I felt it. Because the fact is, I feel everything that you feel. You are never alone. And like, it kind of made me go, oh, could you see Max kind of tearing up? And you see Michael, because I think for him, it's like, for the first time in a long time, that was like a very like heart-to-heart -heart moment between these brothers. And it's like, kind of finally knowing how Max really feels. I thought that was kind of pretty neat. It just kind of, it was so heartwarming. And I think we could see big steps going forward between them kind of growing their bond together. So I just thought that was kind of a neat little element to the episode but also something interesting i meant to bring up earlier um kind of tied into all that is the powder that was used to stop their abilities How, i mean i guess at some point in time noah must have come across something where it's like whoa this is blocking my powers what the hell is this i guess maybe when he found out there were other aliens he was like you know what i'm gonna gather all this stuff up and use it just in case i mean maybe it makes you wonder, has he been here longer than them? Did he come on a different ship? Did he come on the same ship as them? Where's his pod? Because we've seen their pods, but where's his, if that's the case? Meaning he had to have woken up before them. Maybe he crash landed somewhere else. Because let's not forget the alien that was originally here ended up dying. So are they all... Well, because these three are siblings, so that, you know, a situation must be something else. He can't be their sibling necessarily, you know, but they, because the thing is, they've always had like a bond. Like, they grew up like siblings, so what does that mean for, like I said, with Noah and everything? Because once again, there's that alien that had originally died, you know, back in the day, you know, when they originally landed in Roswell, so does that mean Noah was taken? So maybe the alien was in the process of moving all of them when, you know, Noah ended up being separate. Well, Noah was the only one that got moved and the others didn't. I don't know. It's a very interesting topic in itself. But going back to what I was bringing up before, like the whole yellow powder of like stopping their abilities and stuff like that, like... You know, because the question then becomes, like, how long has, like I said, he's known at least, you know, since they were teenagers about them being aliens, considering the fact that he took control of Isabel and everything like that. I mean, maybe he didn't know about Max and uh, Michael. I would assume he would have, but who knows? So, I'm, I'm very interested to kind of dive into this and see what the next episode has in store for us, because we are winding down to the end of the season. Um, there's only two episodes left that I'm aware of, because I think there's only 13 episodes in the season. So, I'm very interested to see what ends up going down. Because another element to this, too, is like everything that's going on with Cameron, because she has to give information to uh, Jesse uh, Manns so she can help out her sister Charlie. And, you know, even Liz is like, oh, wow, you're protecting Max over your sister for her? It's like, I'm just trying to do the right thing, so... We're going to see how that ends up playing out. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.